Well, India is battling deadly floods, landslides and all of this after record-breaking rains in Maharashtra, parts of the Konkan region. The death toll in Maharashtra is in the hundreds, with many more feared to be trapped, many more still untraceable. Heavy rains in short spells are just the latest example that show that India is on the front line of climate change. There are floods that are being reported in four states in the country. We'll be joined by a panel of experts to analyze these patterns to predict what lies ahead. But before we do that, let's take a look at this ground report from some of the worst hit areas in Maharashtra. NTTV has been reporting from Ground Zero. My colleague Saurabh Gupta has been traveling through the worst hit areas of Maharashtra. He sent us this report. Sangli district remains one of the worst affected by floods. Road connectivity is a challenge as flood waters are flowing through the roads. Fields nearby also have been inundated. As you can see, the standing crop completely underwater and farmers say the losses could be as bad as the 2019 flood in Sangli. Barely two kilometers from the city, but the road has completely disappeared here. Villages are cut off as the Krishna River has overflowed. Fish were seen washed up on the road by the flood waters. While villages have been moved to safety, stray canines are stranded on rooftops. Locals fear the worst. Some villages are trying to make their way through flooded roads in waist deep water as their houses have been completely submerged. In Kasbidegraj village, boats are being used for transport on what were roads a few days ago. Most residents are at a nearby college which has been turned into a relief camp. Village after village in Sangli is flooded with water inundating homes and also the fields. Now, this is of course one of such villages which have been completely inundated by flood water. People from this village have been moved to a relief camp. Of course, villagers say that the damage could be as bad as 2019 floods or even worse if the flood waters continue to remain so as they are. river uh, side Around 80,000 people have been evacuated to relief camps in Sangli. Arrangements for food and water have been made. These women who have been here at this relief camp since Friday say they are scared. Villagers say they are worried that this year is going to be a repeat of 2019. Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre, who visited Chiplun today, said the Konkan region is used to heavy rainfall but hasn't seen something like this. He or the Deputy Chief Minister is expected in Sangli on Monday and says the relief plan will be announced with the help of the centre after the total damage is assessed. Village after village remains completely submerged in Sangli. Now this village of course has been completely inundated by flood waters. Ground floor houses cannot be lived in. People living in you know, one story houses have been moved out from here. They've been moved to a nearby church and a nearby college. But if you see in these pictures, the entire village completely inundated, including the main road leading into the village. And all houses that have ground floor homes are completely inundated. Only those who are leaving, living on the first floor are able to live in the village. The rest have all been evacuated to a nearby college and a nearby church so that they can be safe and lives are not lost. In Sangli, with camera person Rajendra Dhyalkar, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. Well, the tragedy really does extend beyond Maharashtra. India this year has seen two cyclones, one deadly glacier collapse in the Himalayas in Uttarakhand in February, a sweltering heat wave in several parts of northern India not very long ago, and now killer floods, not just here in India, but actually world over. Dr. Sunita Narayan, the director, Center for Science and Environment, and Dr. Mrityunjay Mahapatra, the DG of uh, the Met Department in India, join us to talk more about this. Dr. Mahapatra, to you first, record-breaking rainfall, and I just listed out just 2021 what all we've seen we're clearly seeing 
more tragic weather patterns emerge, more worrying weather patterns emerge with a greater frequency and more severity? Yes, it is true. If you look at uh, the rainfall activity over Maharashtra, for example, so this year it has been excess rainfall from past July, past June to till date, if you calculate, it is about 49% above the normal rainfall. And with respect to July also, it is 55% above normal rainfall. Especially during the period from 17 to 23 July, if you just look at, there has been a highly excess rainfall activity over Konkan region starting from Sindhu, Ratnagiri, up to the northern parts of Konkan and also the Madhya Maharashtra districts. So, which has resulted uh, this type of um, unprecedented uh, flooding situations and also the floods has resulted in the secondary hazards like landslides and others. So, it has been, uh, uh, it can be attributed to um, two different factors. One is the immediate uh, uh, weather phenomena which occurred during this period of 17 to 22nd, a low pressure area developed over the Bewa Bengal and as and when a low pressure develops over Bewa Bengal, the westerly winds, monsoon winds strengthen near the Konkan coast and it leads to very intense rainfall activity. So that was apprehended and uh, it could be predicted, the wet spell was predicted and on daily basis we went on updating the information starting from 15 uh, July onwards. And um, in addition to that, if you just look at the long term impact and long term trend of the monsoon activity and the rainfall, the study says that um, the extreme rainfall events, uh, especially the events with rainfall more than 15 centimeters per day, mm. is increasing, especially over the tropical region over the globe. And uh, with respect to India, also the central part of the country, including Maharashtra, Gujarat, to Odisha and Andhra Pradesh, right. there is a significant increase in frequency of these intense rainfall events. And especially whenever you have got a low pressure system uh, uh, developing over Bay of Bengal, in its association, the global warming or the climate change has a special impact leading to increased intensity of the rainfall event. So that is uh, an established truth and accordingly we have to take off uh, the required measures. Right. So you know, we'll we'll come we'll come to some of those measures and also how important your job really becomes in these times. But Sunita Narayan, you know, the World Met Department has predicted that there are going to be more frequent weather events and they are going to happen with more severity. What does this tell us? Can we really call these disasters natural? Rishika, that's a very good question, and uh, Dr. Mahapatra has uh, given us a very good answer. Essentially, what he is pointing to is no single event is because of climate change. But what you are seeing today is the increased frequency of extreme rain events, extreme weather events, whether it is you saw in Canada, in the coldest regions of the world, you have temperatures as high as 50 degrees centigrade or even higher. You had because of the uh, temperature increase, you had wildfires happening across in including the Arctic and Australia. You have drought in California. You have today flooding happening in India, in different parts of India. And if you look at the data from IMD, which we have been analyzing, you will see what you're seeing is extreme rain events are essentially meaning huge amount of rain in very short amount of time. If you look at Mahabaleshwar, with the rain that has happened this last week, you've literally seen an average rainfall in two days, which would be the average of, say, the whole year of, uh, of Mahabaleshwar. Now, that's the extreme rain, and what we need to worry about in India is two things. One, we need to worry about the fact that these events are going to happen as we mismanage our land and water even more because we are destroying our floodplains. You're going to come back to that, but I just want to make the point that we need to worry about this because these are only the beginning of the change that we will see more and more with greater ferocity in the years to come. Right. Is a, is a greater response, uh, Dr. Mahapatra, warranted from the government? It's it, These are, you know, like you said, you use the word unprecedented in your opening remarks. Do unprecedented measures therefore need to be taken? Yeah, my word is uh, unprecedented in the sense that um, over the period of time, this type of extremely heavy rainfall events are occurring. Mm. 
and we can expect this type of 60 centimeter rainfall in uh, 24 hours over Mahabaleswar and which was following with 48 centimeter rainfall in the previous day. So that could be possible because of the joint impact of uh, the low pressure systems, uh, active monsoon conditions, westerly winds uh, in the presence of the impact of global warming. Hmm. So what is the need is that we can have two strong approaches. One is the non-structural measures um, and second one is the structural measures. Okay. In the non-structural measure, you have to improve the detection, monitoring and early warning systems. And in the early warning system, there are various components. One is the presentation, generation, dissemination of early warning to the last mile and mm. all disaster managers and responders. The other one is that the response of the responders in time. And uh, the third component is that the impact-based early warning. So we should tell specifically what could be the expected impact and hence the response actions by the disaster managers in the general public. Right. Uh, in this regard, uh, India Meteorological Department and Minister of Arts and Sciences are working together. For the last two years, we are providing impact based forecast at district level and all mm. the cities. Mm. In addition to that, um, every city and every district is being provided the impact based now casting. That is what is going to happen in three hours. Right. So, in this direction to improve it further, it is an ongoing process of improvement. It will continue. We will be improving the detection by augmenting the radar network. The, um, detection system for automated weather stations, automated mm. gauges, wind profiler, microwave radiometers, and like that. Well, you In know, addition to that, we'll also have the modeling system which can cater to such type of requirements. Yes. For example, go for urban flooding system of Mumbai, which is now providing observations every 15 minutes. Mm. Similarly, we have gone for the South Asia flash flood guidance, which can provide you every six hour the probability of occurrence of floods in a region of four into four kilometers. That means right. every one state in the country. But you know, so a lot of these, but, but, but let me just interrupt you there because Sunita Narayan, a lot of these are considered freak weather events. You know, rainfall that is supposed to be spread over months is being recorded in days, even hours in some places. And this is not just happening in India. This is happening in Europe. We've seen it happen in China. Those pictures are equally devastating. No, absolutely, Rishika. And I think what Dr. Mahapatra is saying is not to be discounted. The part, the, the importance of the Met Department in forecasting and in informing us of these extreme rain events so that we can evacuate people is very important. But that's only one part of the issue. Yes. The fact is we have to get our land and water management right and we have to do that today knowing that the Peak weather events will only intensify in the years to come. Now, if you look at it today, uh, or how do you manage your land and water better for floods? You manage it by making sure that you have enough drainage, you can hold the water where it falls, you protect your lakes, your ponds, your tanks, make sure your rivers are flowing. Because, Rishika, please understand the scale of the tragedy. The tragedy is not just the floods that you are seeing on your screen right now. The tragedy is the drought that will follow. The fact is that if we don't hold this water, we don't recharge the ground, all this water becomes waste. And this is the same Sangli region of the country, which actually is very drought prone. Yes. So this is happening more and more. These rain events are going to mean drought at the time of flood. Now, this means not only get our water management uh, and land management right, but planning for uh, uh, for climate change, hmm. which means make sure that you can build structures which are decentralized, hold the water wherever it falls, and are strong enough to withstand it. You talked about the Chamoli disaster. Why the Chamoli disaster? Three things. One, the fact is the Himalayas are the world's youngest mountain ecologically the most fragile. Two, we are doing development so badly, not that we should not build hydroelectric plants, but we are building them in such a bad manner back to back that we are making the Himalayas more fragile. Right. And then we get to So right. that's just the point I'm making, that mismanagement of land and water, mismanagement of the environment in a world which is increasingly climate risk is a greater challenge. 
डॉक्टर महापात्रा गिवन एवरीथिंग दैट सुनीता नारायण हैज जस्ट सेड डू यू एंटिसिपेट दीस वेदर पैटर्न्स टू बिकम वर्स एंड देयरफॉर द इंपैक्ट ऑन द ग्राउंड टू बिकम वर्स यू नो व्हाट इज योर प्रेडिक्शन व्हाट लाइज अहेड या दिस पर्टिकुलर एपिसोड ओवर महाराष्ट्र वाज प्रेडिक्टेड वेल इन एडवांस एंड वी कुड give indication that an extreme wet spell is expected which can lead to different types of impacts including the landslides hmm. but however uh, in the country if you just look at we do not have uh, the landslide prediction system as of now the people are working uh, in uh, it is not the mandate of india meteorological department similarly there are many other factors as madam was telling uh, with respect to the flooding uh, hmm. which may be urban flooding it may be the flooding in the river and systems or it may be the past floods in the uh, hilly prone hilly areas or the prone areas but um, for um, their force we have to go for the structural measures apart from the non structural measures for planning preparedness prevention and mitigations okay and um, at the same time there is need also to improve the capacity of the public and disaster managers in view of this increasing impact of the global warming with respect to your question uh, the forecast uh, the season is on and this is the month of july and the main monsoon months are july and august mm. um, if you ask me the forecast for next few days yes this uh, extreme wet spell has been over now there is a little reprieve there is decrease in rainfall activity we can expect uh, a little decrease in rainfall activity we can expect some isolated heavy rainfall but we are not expecting the next 5 to 7 days this type of uh, okay no but rainfall. but but you know just looking a little more into the long term what has the last uh, you know the last couple of years and changes over the last couple of years taught us about what lies ahead do you anticipate dr mahapatra things getting worse yeah if you just look at uh, as uh, uh, madam and dr sunita narayan was telling and uh, uh, the frequency and intensity of the rainfall events are increasing Hmm. and we can expect that such type of frequent events to occur in view of the increasing temperature and if you go by the projected temperatures if you go by the business as usual and people are trying to contain it within 2 degrees celsius then also you can expect the increase in frequency of the intense heavy rainfall events over this tropical region and also in the country therefore we have to go for that but if you consider uh, the forecast this year yes it is a normal monsoon year we have predicted 101% also we have predicted that in central right, india right. we will have the above normal rainfall activity and then so narayan i i right. want to give you i want to give you the last word what what lies ahead and what do you make of of our preparation of what lies ahead are we re, are we really ready for what lies ahead so rishika we clearly are not the world is not i mean forget india the world is not we have seen the way devastation in germany devastating in canada but it's time we did understand the the urgency of the catastrophe that is looking that that is in front of us i mean dr mahapatra is saying it's a normal monsoon year yes it's a normal monsoon year but it will have huge weird rainfall events to it you will see increase the intensity of rainfall just one statistic rishika i can if i can give you and give your viewers in india it only rains on an average in a 100 Hours in a year, hundred hours hmm. out of three thousand eight hundred hours. That's the average thing. Okay. Now the the whole culture of India was how to hold the rain when it where it falls. That's why the monsoon is so important for us. Right. Now right. you will see fewer number of hours and even more rain. Okay. So your your ability to be able to hold the water, to be able to manage it. and to be able to survive through the dry period that follow the flood is crippling it destroys life and property but what comes after is even worse the prolonged drought and i think that's why land water management the ability to be able to manage our environment is going to be critical not just in india but across the world and we are not seeing enough seriousness as yet we talk about it we beat our chest about it right. but i'm sorry right. action on the ground just doesn't match the scale of the devastation that is staring us in the face well uh, it's it's been a very interesting conversation and i think both of you have raised some very very important points and one sincerely hopes that more is done on the ground to actually be able to change whatever we can 
uh, at least on on our part and you know we can't just keep calling it natural disasters because increasingly there's very little natural about it uh, dr mahapatra and sunita narayan thank you so much uh, for joining us on this edition of left right and center